Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a start to finish mixed media collage piece. A little bit different from the last ones that we did. If you are new to my channel and want to go back and check out not the last video but the two prior, I did a couple of mixed media pieces that were very brightly colored and I collaged some birds onto them. They were for an artisan's market that I'm participating in right now. But this one's a little bit different. Um, I'm still using a lot of the same techniques. As you can see here, I am using some book pages. So as a little aside from that, I have always loved the look of book pages in art, but I was always kind of horrified at the thought of destroying a book because I'm a big reader and respect the book as a media of itself. But I kind of got over that. I went to a used bookstore near where I live and I picked up a copy. This is actually A Tale of Two Cities that I'm using here. And I kind of came to terms with it by saying, okay, this is a secondhand book that may or may not even get purchased or looked at again. So I'm kind of breathing a second life into it by using it in some of my pieces. So right now I'm still gluing down some of the book pages and I am about to go in with some of the gel prints that I did in the last video. If you are interested in seeing how I made any of these prints, check out the last video I did and uh, you'll be able to see exactly how I made those. Much like my other work, I'm not going in with any sort of plan. Um, all I really did to start was go through some of the jelly prints that I made and pick out a handful that I thought the colors might work together or even just whatever kind of grabbed me at the moment because largely this is going to get covered up by more collage and also some paint so it's not inherently important that the pieces that you choose right off the bat have to fit any criteria really. I should say here that what I am using as an adhesive is the uh, gel matte medium in this one. I've used the gel matte medium as well as the gel gloss in a lot of my previous videos and that is my adhesive of choice. It's great because it dries completely clear and if you use the matte it leaves absolutely no visible sign of the adhesive itself. If you use the gloss it does give it a gloss finish but I typically use a final spray of some sort on top of my pieces. So again, I didn't really choose one over the other for any other reason than I happened to have that one handy at the time and I figured I would just go ahead and use it. Now you'll see me using what is actually an old Michaels gift card and the purpose for that is to smooth out the pages so that you don't get any air pockets or wrinkles. And this is important for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, I am going to be going over this with paint and possibly more collage, and you don't want to have that uneven surface on which you're going to work. But also as a finished piece, it's going to be much more polished looking and professional if you don't have the air pockets. And it can even be detrimental to the piece as far as having a lasting quality, because if someone would you know bump into that or somehow that would get torn it's going to ruin your piece when it's just a very easy thing to avoid by using the card to smooth everything down. I did want to note that in this video I am using a canvas as the substrate and in the previous two bird mixed media collage pieces I used a wooden panel and I do have to say and this is just a personal preference not loving working on the canvas it's okay and if canvas is what you have there's no reason why it won't work but having used the boards previously it's just a much nicer surface it's much more stable and I noticed especially when um, once all the gluing was done and I turned the piece over to trim the edges I wasn't getting as clean of an edge as I did with the wooden panels so for me I will probably go back to using those and maybe order some larger sizes in the future but I have so many canvases around here because I buy them every time they go on sale and I thought you know just because I hadn't used it before I wanted to try something new and I, I just not my favorite. So I'm just going to continue to work on the collage portion here and I will be back with you when I start the painting.
I've given the collage and the adhesive some time to dry, which is another thing that I noticed. It takes a little longer on the canvas, which does make sense. But I let this dry completely before I started adding any of the paint. And here I'm going in with a little bit of Naples yellow. I kind of, at this point in the painting, wanted to do a little bit of more like muted colors. And I thought that's the direction I was going to go in. But as I've said before, I don't work with any sort of plan in mind. So of course, everything changes throughout the piece multiple times. And a lot of this ends up getting covered up at the end. You'll see here that I am putting a little bit of the matte medium straight onto the canvas. And what I'm doing is mixing some titanium white in with that. If you add the matte medium to your acrylic paint, it'll make a very opaque color, much more transparent. And that's what I was going for. I wanted a little bit of the white, but I kind of just wanted a almost foggy appearance, which is what the matte medium is going to give me here. That'll work with the gloss medium as well. Just whatever you're using, it will... I'm going to say thin out because I guess it thins out the visual effect, but not the consistency of the paint. So it's still the same consistency, but what you're getting is exactly what you see on the screen there with just kind of like a muted clouded effect with the white. Now I'm going in with one of my absolute favorite colors, which is Burnt Sienna. And this version is a nice translucent one, which again is something that I wanted because I do have a lot of collaging down on the initial layer and I want some of that to show through, maybe not to the initial intensity that it was put on there and maybe some of it I do want covered up. But to start with, I wanna be able to see the text from the book pages as well as some of the texture that I have in the gel prints underneath. Plus, if you put this on top of other paint, you're going to get a little bit of that color showing through, and it's going to just be a nice bleed through and a nice combination of the two colors together. Here I am mixing a little bit of Payne's Gray with some of the matte medium, again, to just tone down the intensity of the color just a bit. I want that to be a little more transparent as well for the same reasons as before. And what I'm doing is actually, I put quite a bit of the matte medium on that because I'm really looking for something very muted, and you'll see here in a second that I achieved that. And I'm going in with some large number stencils that I have. So the goal here was just to create mood. There's no particular reason or purpose for what I chose. It's more of a design quality and like mood of the actual piece. That's how I create most of my art. This is the point where I change things up a bit. If you watched my previous videos, I, you know that I'm really into birds and I could sit and make bird collages all day long, but that's going to be pretty boring for the viewers. So I thought I would go in with a different subject matter today. So off camera, I just drew some really roughly rudimentary human forms because I wanted to use those in this piece. And the one on the left that I'm gluing down right now, I did out of just straight tissue paper. And I love the quality of that because you can see it, but it has an ethereal look to it so you can see every detail of everything underneath it. This piece I just cut out of a book page that I'm working on now and the piece to the far right is a gel print that I printed onto a book page. So all three have some like qualities which makes them make sense together in the piece but they're all different enough to bring a different quality.
I just went ahead and covered the entire piece with a little more medium, and at this point I thought that to make the piece a little more balanced, it needed something dark in the top right hand corner. So I cut a circle out of the same print that I used to make the bottom right hand figure, and it just helps move the eye a little bit better through the piece. It wasn't so bottom heavy and blank at the top because it just kind of looked unfinished. Here I'm just adding a little bit of tissue paper on top of that to change the value of that circle without changing the detail underneath. Here I'm going to go in with a couple pieces of tissue paper. I'm kind of deciding as I go. I was going to lay that the whole way over that figure, but then I decided to change it and just place a square right across the center. And I really like the way that looks. I carried that idea over into the middle form just to make it make a little more visual sense because I had the one on the right and then I carried it over to the middle form so that you've got the square on both of those and the figure on the left is made entirely out of the tissue so it does bring a little visual continuity. At that point I was done with the paint and the collage and I just wanted to go in and embellish a little bit so I'm using a china marker that I just got not too long ago and I'm just going around and tracing some of the figures just to darken the lines and make them a little more uh, stand out a little more visually and then I'm just going in and adding a little bit of detail and some lines and some shapes where they felt appropriate just to kind of bring the whole piece together. At this point the piece was starting to feel finished and it's important to know when to stop because you can easily ruin a piece by keep if you keep going in and doing more work than needs to be done. So I chose this as a good end point and now I'm going to take you and show you the finished piece. I've entitled this piece The Prophecy and here it is all finished. This is actually for sale on my Etsy store and I will post a link in the comments. Thank you guys so much for subscribing and stopping by. I can't wait to see you again next time. Have a great day.